Again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. My name is Matt Slater, proud to be the supervisor for the town of Yorktown. Uh, this is a really important conversation uh, for our community uh, in a lot of different ways, I think. Um, the town uh, this past year has taken, I think, some really bold steps when it comes to combating climate change and making uh, vast improvements to not just our local environment, but um, the environment as a whole here for Westchester, New York State, and, and across the country and the globe. One of the first things that we did uh, earlier this year, for those who uh, don't remember, is we created this Climate Smart Communities Task Force. I think I saw a couple of our members actually participating today. Uh, and they've been so innovative and forward thinking in, in so many aspects when it comes to how can we provide direct uh, uh, services to, to our residents and, and push Yorktown to become a leader in combating uh, climate change. Uh, and they've, uh, they've really done a, a superb job. Uh, one of the things that we were able to uh, accomplish uh, with the support of our CSC task force is this great partnership with Sustainable Westchester. Uh, and as you can see on the slide, you know, some of the steps that we've taken uh, include uh, adopting uh, the comprehensive uh, solar law, uh, which is one of the first uh, in, in the county. We believe we are the first to pass uh, an energy storage uh, a, a regulatory framework to, uh, for, for energy storage development as well. Um, that was done in, in consultation with our CSC task force, the Climate Smart Communities Task Force. Uh, over the fall, we did award the Granite Knolls Solar Carport Project, uh, which we're moving forward with uh, a company called HESP that we're very excited about. Uh, and some other things that we've, we've um, discussed include uh, a partnership with NIPA, uh, again, through Sustainable Westchester. They've evaluated some of the additional municipal sites uh, that we have across town uh, for additional uh, potential projects for solar. Uh, but the, the one thing that I'm particularly proud of, uh, which happened more recently, uh, again, with the help of, of Nina and the team here at Sustainable Westchester, is I believe by leading by example. And so if we're telling our residents to participate in community solar, I think that the town should be participating in community solar as well. And so we were able to uh, uh, sign an agreement with Lodestar. Uh, they're gonna be turning on their solar uh, field in upstate New York on December 23rd. So right around the corner. Um, I keep threatening to take a road trip for the, for the day, um, but um, uh, and so that's it, that's a big step for us because it's 70% uh, of our uh, of our electric is now going to be offset by a green power source. So uh, not only are we telling our residents and encouraging our residents uh, to, to participate in community solar and providing this particular unique opportunity through Sustainable Westchester, but we're showing our residents the importance of it by having the town government uh, do it ourselves. Uh, and uh, we've already, I spoke with Nina earlier this morning, and we already have a couple of more ideas that we're going to be um, uh, focusing on as well uh, moving forward. But uh, today is really just uh, an important information session uh, for the residents of our town to get a better understanding of what community solar is, how does it work, and how do you benefit from it. Uh, this again, and I'm sure that the team is going to be uh, providing you more details on it, uh, applies to our homeowners, it applies to our, our houses of worship, and it also applies to our, our qualifying businesses. Uh, and so, you know, from our standpoint, this is from the town standpoint, this is a, just another step forward in our mission uh, to continue to be leaders in climate, in, in combating climate change and improving our, our environment uh, so that future generations are going to be able to enjoy the beauty of the Hudson Valley, just like I did growing up here and like so many others uh, who, are, who are in our community. And so uh, with that, I do want to thank all the residents who are participating, who are joining us to learn more about this important program. I really wanna thank Sustainable Westchester and Nina Orville for just being fantastic partners for the town, for educating us on, on a lot of important issues and a, and a lot of important initiatives uh, and helping us grow in this field because it's an important one. It's not gonna go away. Uh, we have to continue to push the envelope, I believe, uh, by, by finding new ways to um, promote and invest in renewable energy sources uh, and community solar right now is, is one of those great opportunities for us as a community uh, to do just that. And so uh, we did send out, I see the letter on the screen through Sustainable Westchester. We have sent out an initial letter, obviously, 
Um, hopefully uh, folks on the call have received this, um, but this was a first step. And I'm sure that Nina, you're gonna provide some information as to the success rate because it's been very, very high uh, for, for our community. Uh, success rate based off the letter of people who have actually signed up uh, to participate in this program. Uh, we have received questions from residents about it um, and we've been able to provide satisfactory answers thanks to our partnership with Sustainable Westchester. Um, and this information session is just another step in that education process. And, uh, and so with that, again, I just want to reemphasize my appreciation uh, to the residents of Yorktown for taking time out of your snow day uh, to, to join us, but also to Nina Orville and Claire and the entire team over at Sustainable Westchester um, for, for being great partners for our community. And again, to our, our Climate Smart Communities Task Force uh, for also uh, being a, a phenomenal catalyst within our community uh, as, we, as we continue to look for more ways to combat climate change. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Matt. And it's been such a wonderful partnership between Sustainable Westchester and the town of Yorktown. I'm Nina Orville. I run the solar programs at Sustainable Westchester with um, very important support from my colleague, Claire Kakaska, who's on the phone as who's on the, the uh, session as well. So um, next slide, Claire. Right. All of the work that we do at Sustainable Westchester is within the context of what's happening in, in New York State. And the good news is that New York is a leader in our country in terms of addressing this um, extraordinary challenge of climate change. And last year, the state set very aggressive goals and, and requirements in, in this regard. Um, specifically, the state is required to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions 40% by 2030. And um, most relevant for us when we talk about um, community solar, 70% of the state's electricity supply on the state electricity grid is required to come from renewable sources by 2030. What's really notable about that is that at the moment, the percentage coming from renewable sources is under 30%. So we're talking about going from 30% to 70% at this point really in, in less than 10 years. So what's required is really a um, transformation of our whole energy supply. And in order for us to be able to accomplish this, it really requires everybody participating. That's why support and leadership from the town of Yorktown is so important. And that's where all of you come in as well. And the role of Sustainable Westchester is to make it as easy as possible for all these different participants to play their part and to contribute. So Sustainable Westchester is a not-for-profit organization. And essentially all of the municipalities in Westchester County are members, including Westchester County itself. And we're thrilled that the town of Yorktown is, um, ha has been a, a member uh, since, since our earliest days as well. We have a number of programs at Sustainable Westchester designed to help our member municipalities and their residents and increasingly their, their businesses as well. Um, take advantage of the opportunity to um, uh, embrace clean energy. If we could go back, Claire. And um, also in many cases to, to save money. So those programs include a program called the Westchester Power uh, Program. We have 27 municipalities in that, the vast majority of which are receiving clean electricity for their residents through that program. We're going to be talking about community solar today. We have um, a program called Heat Smart, which is designed to help homeowners and commercial property owners switch from fossil fuels for heating and cooling their buildings. 
We have a clean transportation program, which provides rebates for um, electric vehicles and can also um, make it free for municipalities and a lot of other entities to install um, electric vehicle charging infrastructure. And Matt, this is something that we'll be discussing with Yorktown as well, because it's a great opportunity, um, as well as a program to help our municipalities um, guide their residents in how to divert materials from the waste stream and to properly recycle. So um, we've been working at Sustainable Westchester for a number of years to make it easier for residents and commercial um, entities to benefit from solar energy. We ran a program called Solarize Westchester um, with 22 municipalities in, in, across the county that was designed to make it easier for people to install solar on their own property. And it resulted in about 600 new solar installations. And that sounds like great news. Next slide. But the reality is of the thousands of people who expressed interest in this program, 85% decided either that it wasn't a good fit for them or they learned that they really weren't good candidates for solar. And um, <clears throat> so there are a range of reasons for that. Shady roofs, we have beautiful tree canopy in Westchester County that results obviously in a lot of shade. Um, the condition of, of people's roofs, financial considerations sometimes um, precluded this from being an option for people. And of course, anybody who's a renter or who lives in multifamily housing is excluded right off the bat from being able to install solar on site where they live. So community solar is a, a relatively new program that has been enabled by New York State as part of the state's effort to really accelerate adoption of renewable energy to help the state meet its climate goals, as well as um, with a focus on making sure that more people can actually benefit from solar energy. So the way it works is that large solar installations are constructed in places that are optimal for solar. It can be on rooftops, it can be on um, as solar parking canopies, it can be on landfills and, and in other, other similar places. And then the electricity is exported to the local utility. It helps, it becomes part of their electricity supply and helps them green the grid. And then people like you can sign up and subscribe and become a subscriber to a particular community solar installation. And that results in, the re in you receiving community solar credits on your utility bill and then paying the owner of the solar farm a discounted amount for those credits, which results in a net savings for you in your electricity costs on your electricity bill. So the advent of community solar has really transformed solar development in, in New York State and certainly in our region. There now are many, many dozens of community solar facilities that are in the pipeline and we're starting to, to see these, these projects being constructed and finished and coming online. Um, so it's very exciting. You're really, um, it's still early days for community solar. So um, you're gonna see a lot more of it. <clears throat> and um, with that, next slide, Claire. I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, uh, Claire who is gonna share uh, more about how community solar works for, for people who subscribe. Claire, thank, thank you, me. Nina. And hi, everyone. So as Nina was mentioning, community solar works differently than normal solar that we've 
all come to understand. And it's a huge step forward for renewable energy in that it's accessible to almost everyone. It's very easy to become a subscriber to community solar and um, you start seeing consistent benefits pretty much right away. Um, there's 10% savings for um, each subscriber once a project is live, a community solar project that someone is subscribed to um, generates the solar credits that Nina mentioned and each month. Um, we'll discuss this in, in a bit more detail in just a minute, but you'll save 10% off of whatever solar credits you earn as a subscriber to a community solar farm. Um, there's no solar panel installation on your home, which automatically makes it so much easier to be a part of a community solar program and um, participate in solar. Um, there's no fees to join the program either. You sign up at no cost to you and you can also cancel at any time with no cost to leave the program at all. We want to make sure that it's as flexible and convenient to participate and and take part in renewable energy as possible. Uh, and many subscribers, many of you may have an energy supply company or um, some people are a part of a CCA. Community solar is compatible with any energy supplier at all. And one of the best parts is that it takes less than 10 minutes to sign up. And as Nina mentioned before, it's huge in supporting new solar development in New York State and in Westchester County. So to go into some more detail on how the billing and savings work, um, step one, you earn community solar credits each month um, based on your share of the community solar farm and how much solar energy that generates. So the solar credits that you earn each month reduce your utility bill. Some of you may have Con Ed, some of you have NYSEG. Uh, so your community solar credit will reduce your utility bill. And then step two, two or three weeks after you get your utility bill, you'll get an email notification that lets you know what your solar credit amount was that month, the amount that you'll pay for those solar credits, as well as your savings for that month and your environmental impact. And step three is after you get that email notification about a week goes by and that your bank account is debited 90% of the amount of the solar credit that you've earned that month, uh, you provide your banking details when you're signing up to the community solar program. So you save 10% the amount of your community solar credit each month. And essentially, it's like buying a $100 gift card for $90. If your solar credit for a given month were, for example, $100, you would pay $90 and save 10. So there's always savings on whatever solar credit you earn each month. And to show you what it would look like on your utility bill, this is an example of a nice egg bill. I'll show you an example of a Con Ed bill in just a moment. For community solar, you'll see a new line item appear at the bottom of your NYSEG bill. It's labeled CDG value stack credit and it shows your solar credit as a negative number, which is great because it reduces your bill. And then it, it shows you the adjusted new total that you owe as well. And then this is what a Con Ed bill would look like for those of you who have Con Ed and it's labeled as an adjustment. So the takeaway is that whether you have Con Ed or NYSEG, your solar credit shows up as a new line item and reduces the overall amount that you owe to your utility. And I mentioned the email notification that you would get after your reduced utility bill comes to you. Your email notification would be from Community Solar and it would let you know what your solar credit was that month, what amount you'll be auto paying for that solar credit your savings that month, which will be 10% of your solar credit, and also how much you've saved as a part of the program so far, which is nice because it, it shows you the real total impact financially for you that Community Solar has had in, in your total savings so far. 
uh, as well as your carbon impact on being part of the program. So community solar is a great way to participate in the renewable energy sphere. For those of you that may not be able to install solar or just choose not to at the moment, um, you save on your electricity bills, you contribute to New York State Renewable Energy Goals, and not only that, but you contribute to York, Yorktown Sustainability Goals, right where you are locally. Um, Supervisor Slater and and everyone in Yorktown has been working so hard to make Yorktown more sustainable. And um, for Community Solar, our program donates, uh, makes a contribution of $50 back to the town and Yorktown Sustainability Initiatives for each new Yorktown resident that signs up for Community Solar. And with 140 plus Yorktown residents already signed up to Community Solar in just the last couple of months that that really adds up. So if you're curious how to enroll, uh, you would just go to sustainablewestchester.org slash solar and follow the steps. And I have a brief two minute video that just walks you through exactly how the enrollment works and what it looks like. And then as soon as we're done with this two minute video, we'll um, take everybody's questions. Some people have been putting their questions in the chat, which is great. And um, so go ahead and, and do that, but we'll answer everybody's questions. Yes. Thanks. First, go to sustainablewestchester.org backslash solar. Enrolling takes five to 10 minutes from start to finish. Click sign up. This takes you to the marketplace. Click find my project. Enter your zip code and confirm your utility to see the opportunities available to you. Choose your community solar project and click sign up. Enter your contact information and create a password. Click continue sign up unless you'd like to schedule a call. Then enter your address. Estimate your monthly electricity bill. Don't worry about making this number accurate. Enter your utility account number. If you're a NYSEG customer, provide the POD ID number found on the third page of your NYSEG bill. Also, you can upload a copy of your utility bill. Enter the required information for the bank account you'd like to use to make the discounted payments for your solar credits. You'll always receive your solar credits first and make the discounted payments later. Your banking details are encrypted on a Citibank server. Your community solar agreement will render with the information you've provided. Click the yellow start button, click to sign, type in your name and click apply. Click next and apply your name again. Then click finish and you're all set. Stop sharing the, your screen. Wonderful. So um, we'd love to take uh, everybody's questions, and we have a few in the chat. Claire, do you want to start with those? Sure. And I'd also just like to mention that um, we will be following up this presentation um, later with an email giving you our contact information and that login, uh, excuse me, that sign up link again, so you have it. Um, so let's get to some of your questions. I have one from Susan. Would you be able to install solar on malls, schools, et cetera? Would you be cutting trees down to produce solar farms? Um, what is the upkeep? Nina, would you, would you sure. like to take that one? Right, so, so starting with the first question about installing solar on malls and schools, et cetera. Absolutely, so that is very much happening. There are a lot of conversations underway with, between solar developers and um, owners of, of different uh, properties like that. So absolutely, if anyone has an idea about that, if anybody has a property that they, um, are, are able to engage in that 
conversation about. We're, we're happy to, to speak with you about that. And then the next question is whether trees are cut down for um, these solar farms. And that's something that um, is very site specific. So in Westchester County, largely because land is so valuable, what we're seeing is the solar facilities that are being constructed are primarily being um, constructed on rooftops or there's solar parking canopies or they're being um, built on degraded lands. Like in the case of the village of Mount Kisco, there's a new community solar facility that was constructed on the landfill. So we're seeing very little construction of large scale solar facilities where trees are, are, being, are being cut. Um, the next question is regarding the upkeep of the solar panels and the environmental cost. So the um, solar facilities are owned typically by the companies that, that, um, that build them. They're responsible for managing them over the life of the solar system. That life is anticipated to be a minimum of 25 years. And actually these um, solar installations will continue to generate electricity long after that. Um, there's a lot of analysis that has been done on the environmental cost of manufacturing solar panels um, versus the value of the clean energy that they generate. <clears throat> and it is very clear that the value of the, the environmental value of the clean energy they generate uh, dramatically exceeds the environmental cost in, in, their, in their manufacture. Uh, so thank you, Susan, Susan. for those questions. Um, the next couple of questions uh, from Michael. Why do you need the customer to join a program like this rather than just selling all of your electricity directly to NYSEG or Con Ed? I mean, I'll let you elaborate, but right. Michael, essentially the reason for that is because New York State wrote the regulation for community yeah. solar so that community members of a community have to participate. And um, it, it means that communities get more familiar with community solar and they are more directly involved with renewable energy instead of just NYSEG or Con Ed being the ones to um, receive that energy. And we, we, none of us really learn or benefit from that solar energy um, the way we would if it was just sent to NYSEG or Con Ed and they could do it, they will with it. Um, so I, that, that's exactly right. As, as Claire was saying, it's, it is um, a little bit, it, it isn't as direct as it could be because the utilities are the, the entity that's receiving the electricity that's generated from these community solar farms, but it's by design by New York State to require uh, people to enroll in these community solar facilities. Um, it, solar developers cannot participate in community solar without subscribers enrolling. And the solar developers um, benefit more financially if they structure these projects as community solar. So New York State wants residents across the state to become educated about, knowledgeable about renewable energy and to be actively participating in the renewable energy um, transformation. And so even though it's less um, direct than it could be, this, this, uh, the way they've set it up is, is by design. Mm -hmm. And Michael's secondary question was, do we save 10% off the supply charges, delivery charges, or both? Um, you save 10% off of whatever solar credit it is that you earn, and your solar credit reduces your total electric bill, which means that if you have a $115 utility bill that month for electricity, that includes delivery, supply, charges, taxes and 
um, everything else that usually comes on your utility bill, your electric utility bill, um, if we say that's $115 total and your solar credit's $100, your solar credit can offset any charge there and leaving you to pay $15 left to the utility. Um, but in answer, your uh, solar credit can apply to any charge you see on your electric bill. The next question I see is how do the shares work? And um, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. So it's, it's not shares in, in the way that you would think of it in terms of purchasing shares in a company. You're not investing anything. You're not purchasing anything. It's simply when we talk about your share, the output from a particular community solar installation is finite. It's going to generate a certain number of kilowatt hours of electricity over the course of a year. And so um, part of the process in enrolling people in community solar is determining what their historical electricity usage is so that they can be matched with an appropriate share or percentage of the output from the community solar installation that they're going to enroll in. And the way that works is people are enrolled up until a particular community solar installation is fully subscribed. And then um, we move on to uh, allowing people to enroll in, in the next community solar installation. That's done to ensure that everybody is able to maximize the benefit <clears throat> that they receive from the solar credits and that those solar credits are appropriately matched to each person's um, usage. Is that, that, that's something that people often have questions about. So if that's not clear to, to anybody, feel free to, uh, to, to let us know and we're, we're happy to um, describe that further. Mm -hmm. Um, the next question is from Richard. Does it matter which project you pick? Um, when you're selecting a community solar project, you just need to make sure that you pick a community solar project in your utility territory. So if you have Con Ed as your utility provider, you would pick a Con Ed specific community solar project. If you have NYSEG as your utility, you would pick a NYSEG community solar project. So I'm just going to share my screen very quickly to uh, just show on our signup page how it is that you would see the difference. Um, so this is the sustainablewestchester.org slash solar website that you would go on to to learn more about community solar sign up. Scroll down to where it says sign up. And this brings you to what we call our marketplace where it shows all our available community solar projects. And it shows the ones that are available and also highlights which one, which ones are for Con Ed customers and which ones are for NYSEG customers. But beyond that, the savings rate for all of these are, are the same. Yeah. And that, that's actually an important point that we didn't highlight, which is Part of what Sustainable Westchester does is to review the enrollment terms that are available and to um, ensure that the enrollment terms for subscribers for these projects meet our standards. And specifically what that means is that they have a 10% savings rate. There are, um, there are a lot of community solar opportunities out there that offer just a 5% savings rate and we, we require 10%. Um, also that there's no um, monthly fee to participate and that there is no penalty if you choose to cancel for any reason. Um, so the, those are, there's a level of vetting that, that we do in, in that respect. Um, 
I'm gonna go on to the next question, which is whether all the projects are up and running or whether they're pending. And it's important to know that the way New York State has structured community solar, typically people are enrolling in projects before those community solar projects have been constructed. So typically when you sign up, there will be a, a bit of a lag between your sign up and when the project that you, the community solar project that you've enrolled in goes live. That's something that um, Sustainable Westchester will communicate um, with you about so that you know when your, the community solar farm is expected to go live. In, at the moment, in the case of the NYSEG projects, um, we have one, Matt Slater mentioned, the one that the town is enrolled in that is going live just later this month. And then the next one that we're also enrolling people in is it'll be January or February. For Con Ed, it's a whole portfolio of community solar projects located across Westchester County. And um, you will be placed on the first project that goes live. People are essentially um, uh, based on the, the order in which people enroll. Um, so those projects are expected to go live this spring and to, to start producing the community solar credits at that point. The next couple of questions have to do with um, wondering whether it's better to go with community solar or Westchester Power, a CCA, or an energy supply company. And with community solar, you can participate in those and also subscribe to community solar. Um, Rich, I see you, you mentioned you are already a part of an ESCO. Anyone who's already a part of an ESCO can also join community solar because they're two different types of renewable energy programs. And Helen, the same goes for Westchester Power or um, a CCA. If you're part of a CCA that supplies your electricity, you can also join community solar. There's no conflict between the two and community solar doesn't change anything about your um, participation with them. And, and the reason for that is that when you join community solar, you are essentially agreeing to receive these community solar credits on your utility bill and to pay a discounted amount for the credits. Community solar does not become your electricity supply. Again, the, the power from these um, community solar installations is exported to your utility. And so you're not actually purchasing the electricity. Instead, you're purchasing these credits that are, that are generated as the, the projects produce electricity and essentially sell it to the utility. Thanks for that. Maureen asks, do I have to use auto payment? We do use auto payment as our, our billing um, option. So, so yes, um, but it also, you get the email notifications. So you'll get the email notification about what your solar credit is, what your savings are that month and what you'll be charged a week roughly before the auto payment goes through, so you know exactly what to expect from that auto payment. Um, Nina, did you have anything to add? No, I think that's I, okay. I think that's it. There was another question that I see we skipped over regarding um, emailing the 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 detail or providing the details regarding the fifty dollar donation. So that's something that we're able to do with. Um, the Sustainable Westchester member municipalities that we partner with, like we're doing with Yorktown and these campaigns, and sometimes with nonprofit organizations that we um, partner with um, on, on these on the community solar outreach. It's essentially a way to extend the benefits of community solar and create benefits at as many levels as, as we're, we're able to. Um, to do. So that's something that we're, we're glad to, to be able to do. 
Um, uh, Marcia has the next question and I, I know I touched on it, but um, on the sign up website as a Con Ed customer, you would be given the option to sign up for Westchester Community Solar or Yonkers Community Solar. Those are the names for the two community solar projects we have available in um, Con Ed right now. So you can pick either one of those. There's no specific community solar project called Yorktown. Um, so you would just pick your community solar project based on your utility once you're at, at our sign up page. Um, great question. Uh, Kathleen has the next question. Are the solar credits the amount of the electric costs that were generated from the solar versus traditional electric generation? Hi, I'm happy to answer that one. So this comes back to the, the way New York State has set up community solar, um, where New York State has essentially designated a value per kilowatt hour for the electricity that's generated from community solar projects. And that in turn ends up um, kind of underlying the amount of the credit that you receive on, on your bill. So the value that New York State has established for community solar is very similar per kilowatt hour um, for the electricity generated from those projects compared to what the utility charges. Um, which means that um, the amount of the credit that you receive um, over time will be quite close to the total amount of that, that you pay in um, electricity costs. Typically, the credit will, will be a little bit less than, uh, than your total electricity bill. Um, Let's see. Uh, Joseph has the next question. Has the idea of a direct investment been considered? For example, if someone could not install their own solar panels due to shade, would they have the option to install panels at a remote site and have 100% of the benefit? That's an interesting question. So um, that is, is not currently an option in, in New York State. Um, instead, New York has embraced this community solar approach. So it, it certainly is true if you're a good candidate for installing solar yourself, your savings are gonna be higher than the 10% you can receive by participating in community solar. So anybody who has a great roof and um, everything else lines up for them to, to do that and install solar on site, that's a fabulous thing to do. Um, and then for the vast majority of people for whom that's not true, community solar is really um, the, the next best thing. And given that it requires no investment to participate and um, no cost um, along, along the way, it's, it's really um, a, a very good opportunity to um, receive savings without, without having to make any investment. Now, Claire, I see we skipped over one question from Jack Cohen, um, whether there's a, oh, I see it was sent just to me. Is there a correlation between progress towards the 70% renewable electricity supply and a reduction of delivery costs imposed by the utility company on the individual's bill? Um, that's an interesting question, Jack. I don't, I don't know that there is a direct correlation. So the delivery costs that the utility charges are, um, that, that's all regulated by the Public Service Commission. They're extraordinarily high in, in New York and particularly in Con Ed service territory. Delivery costs are often more than the cost of the actual electricity that you use. And um, supposedly it all has to do with the cost of actually maintaining the grid and being able to deliver electricity in our congested um, Westchester 
area. So I, I don't know that we're going to see any direct correlation between progress in um, moving towards renewable supplies and the actual delivery costs. Claire, Ma the next one. Yeah, Maureen asked. Um, okay, so um, I gave an example earlier that it, it was the example that many of you might have seen in the Yorktown letter um, to someone asked whether solar credits could offset all the charges on your utility bill. So Maureen, I, I gave this example to show that solar credits can offset all charges or any, any given charge on your utility bill. Um, but if, if you had, $115 utility bill and earned a $100 solar credit that month, your adjusted total due to your utility that month would be $15 because the solar credit would reduce your utility bill by $100. And then later in the month, you would be charged for the $100 solar credit but, and since you always save 10% of whatever solar credit you earn, you would save $10, which is 10% off of the solar credit. Because you would be charged $90. Because you would be charged $90, correct. Yes. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know the first name of SSESQ, but um, the question is, how will the price realized by the developer in the ISO market compare with the Con Edison? energy price. Yeah, so th this gets back to the, the um, answer that I had given before, which is that New York State, specifically the Public Service Commission, sets the rate for that, um, essentially that solar developers will earn per kilowatt hour for the electricity that is produced from these community solar installations. So that, that is set by New York State rather than the, the ISO market. Are we paying for the project before they go live? So you, um, it, it's important to know you will only pay for credits that you have already received on your utility bill. So you enroll first and there's a lag between when you enroll and when a community solar installation goes live and when you start receiving the credits, but there are no charges during that time. You will only be billed for credits that you have received on your utility bill or that you receive on your utility bill. Um, Claire, I, I can answer the, the, the yeah. next one. So there's a question about whether switching to solar hurts the buying power of um, a kind of program called community choice aggregation. Now the town of Yorktown is not part of the community choice aggregation program at the moment that Sustainable Westchester runs. Um, but uh, in, in brief, it does not um, hurt any renewable electricity supply program for someone to enroll in community solar. It's essentially a way of doubling your impact. If you um, have elected to purchase renewable electricity supply through any other party, through Green Mountain or through Sustainable Westchester's Westchester Power Program, you're simply adding um, to the positive environmental impact that you're having if you also enroll in community solar. And Helen, that's why Sustainable Westchester is um, offering and encouraging people to, to participate both in directly purchasing renewable electricity, but also in subscribing to, to community solar because they're complementary and it doubles the impact. The latest question is, will the credit per kilowatt hour vary for any reason? Uh, summer or winter, heating accounts, um, for example. 
Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it, it will, the solar credit that you get will be higher in the summer when it's sunnier and there's more daylight and lower, a bit lower in the winter when it's, there's a bit less day, daylight and it's not as sunny. Um, but Nina, I'll let you speak to the credit per kilowatt hour. Sure. So portion. the, 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 um, the value of the credit per kilowatt hour, again, is set by New York State. That is not going to vary over the, the term that you're a subscriber. <clears throat> As Claire indicated, the amount of the credit that you receive on a monthly basis is going to vary because that is tied to the solar production. Um, once a solar farm has been operating for, um, say, six months or so, a little bit more, if uh, a subscriber if the, if the um, value of the credits that a subscriber has earned exceeds that subscriber's utility bill over that period of time, then those credits essentially are gonna be banked for you and placed on your bill in the season when you use more electricity than the solar facility is producing. So over time, um, the, the, the credits should fairly well match your usage over the course of the year. In those first few months, you're simply going to be receiving the, the value of the credits that, that, are, that are generated because there won't have been an opportunity for credits to have been banked for you in prior periods. Uh, I didn't see any more questions coming in the chat, but if any of you did have questions and it's easier for you to come off mute and and ask, um, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, so were there any other last questions? And Supervisor Slater, if you, if you if there aren't any other questions, um, if there's anything that, that you want to say, of course, we're going to want to um finish up with any remarks from from you when we get to that point no problem just making sure there's no other questions yeah yeah i'm i'm not seeing any come through i don't see anyone coming off mute to ask uh so i think that may be all of the questions and again um we'll be sending all of you a follow-up email so that if you think of questions later, you're welcome to reach out to Nina or myself and, and ask. But I think that's it. Great. Well, again, I just want to thank everyone who, uh, who came out on this snowy uh, morning or now afternoon. Uh, the sun is starting to come out here, so that's good news. Uh, but thank you again for joining us and learning more about this program. Uh, you know, to, to Sustainable Westchester, I, I also want to thank you uh, for, for being a great partner for our community. Uh, again, for those on the call, uh, I can tell you that from the from the interaction that I've seen with potential customers, Sustainable Westchester does a great job explaining the program and answering any and all questions. They're very transparent uh, and able to provide any answers that you may have after this conversation is over and you've processed the information uh, that uh, that's been shared today. So I encourage you to reach out to Sustainable Westchester with any additional questions that you might have, uh, and also encourage you. Uh, as we've done to, uh, to, con to consider the program because it does have a, a significant impact on our environment and uh, enhance not just York Towns, but the state's mission on combating climate change. So uh, again, I just, uh, on behalf of the town and the town board, really wanna thank everyone for participating today. And we're looking forward to uh, hearing about more successes uh, and enrollment from Sustainable Westchester uh, on this important program. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership and thank you to the to the town and for everybody who, who has joined us today. And uh, enjoy the snow. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye now. Thank you.